Hey everybody, welcome back to Flag Slash Van Friday. Hope you liked the Norway episode. So as you know, there's a part where we talk about the mistakes that were made in the video or the things that we didn't mention. For one, the image of the currency was outdated. They changed it, it now looks like this. I accidentally said Sweden was part of NATO. They are not. I could have sworn at the back of my head. I thought they were, that's my mistake, sorry. Uh, I forgot to mention that Grandiosa Pizza is also considered a national dish. This stuff is very popular in Norway. Also, I really wanted to put this in the video, but we just didn't have time. Norway actually has a knighted penguin. No joke. The colonel in chief of Norway's King's Guard is a penguin. This little king penguin, Brigadier Sir Niels Olaf. The tradition started in the early 20th century when Amundsen brought back a penguin from Antarctica. It became sort of a mascot at first, but then it literally turned into a royalty approved rank and promotion. Also in Norway, unless if it's for health reasons, spaying and neutering dogs is not commonly practiced. I forgot to mention that Norway also gets a portion of its energy through trash burning. The system is actually so efficient that they actually have to import trash often. Let's see, uh, the Japanese never used salmon in sushi until a Norwegian delegate introduced it in the 80s. Norway actually has underground roundabouts. I really wanted to talk more about the Sami people. The Sami are the indigenous people of the very northern part of the Scandinavian peninsula. They have a completely different language. They have a completely different culture. They're known for being very strong reindeer herders. And if anybody on earth is kind of like winter snow people, these would probably take the cake. They are really well adapted to winter and snow and cold conditions. Their language is actually more related to Finnish than it is to any other language in the world. Although a Finnish person cannot understand them. I didn't talk too much about the Rus. Basically, it's a celebration before you take your final test in Norway. The kids rent out vans and buses. They party like crazy and they wear these jumpsuits with the Norwegian flags on them. There's a lot of like initiation rituals and that's just about it. All right, there's a lot of other things I could have added, but we don't have time. So if you know anything, please write it in the comments. Otherwise, we gotta move on. So without further ado... I am so glad a lot of you guys, the Norwegian geography peeps, got to be in the video because it's like, it's like you don't get to just watch the episode, you get to honor it with your presence as a Norwegian. And I love doing that. I love putting you guys in videos. So anyway, the flag. The flag is a Nordic cross flag, similar to all the other Nordic states, that depicts a sideways cross, which originally is a symbol of Christianity. The cross is white and blue sitting on a red banner. The flag is essentially a kind of fusion flag that melds in both the nations that had historically had dominion over them. Red and white for Denmark, blue for Sweden. It was also made this way by a dude named Frederick Meltzer who wanted to follow the footsteps of other red, white, and blue tricolor flags like France, Netherlands, and the USA to denote freedom for the country. Many of you are probably also aware of that image that has popped up showing that you can kind of technically find a bunch of hidden flags within the flag of Norway, such as Thailand, France, Poland, and so on. And that's basically it. I mean, keep in mind when they were under the Danish and Swedish, they used those respective flags, except briefly after independence from Denmark in 1814, they pretty much used the same Danish flag, but they put a lion in the corner. There's also that time they used this weird flag in 1844. When they were under the Kalmar Union, of course, they used this yellow and red flag. They shared it with Denmark and Sweden for about eh, a little over a century. For a long time, the chieftains in both Denmark and Norway used this flag. It was a raven banner. However, the royal standard flag of Norway has always been kind of used since the 13th century. Which brings us to the coat of arms. The coat of arms is a red shield with a crowned lion standing holding an axe with another crown on top. Although the lion is not an indigenous animal to the area, it is still considered the national animal as it is generally seen as a symbol of royalty and Christian kingdoms in the European nations. The axe, which was added later, symbolizes Olaf II as the eternal king. Many will say that it actually symbolizes the axe that killed him in this battle, but there's no official definition. Otherwise, on the top of the shield contains another crown, symbolizing the monarchy and royal family of Norway. And yeah, this is actually one of the oldest continuously used coat of arms in Europe. Over the they kind of switched it up a little bit here and there, but overall the line on the red shield has pretty much stayed the same. So yeah, that is pretty much it. Easy. So that means you know what time it is. It's time for Geograph Fan Mail Time. Hey everybody. All right, so we are here back in the studio for Fan Friday and uh, we're gonna have some guest stars as we always usually do. Come on in, Mr. Keith and Mrs. Hannah. That's right, Mrs. Hannah, she is married. I am married. So as you guys know, we always start off with postcards. And uh, today Ryan is helping us out with uh, postcards. I think your name is Surya uh, from India. India. Andrew, he is from Oklahoma City, but he visited Hong Kong. Hong 
Hong Kong. Chris from South Carolina is from Montreal. Montreal. <laughs> <laughs> Matt visited Barra da Lagoa, Brazil. Zach, he is from Australia, but he visited uh, with his family in Italy. A hug to all from your Mexican uh, fan. Fan, Carmen. Some postcards from Istanbul from a Mexican. All right, two postcards. Uh, one from Eric and Poppy who visited Portugal, and the other one is from Roan who visited Ljubljana, Slovenia. This card is from Maggie. She's from Australia, but she visited Japan. This card is really cool. What? I think it's made out of bamboo. Whoa. But sweet. she says it's hard to ride on, so she. Ba -da -ba. <laughs> <laughs> Native of Oklahoma City visits the ancient city of Myanmar. Myanmar. You didn't write your name, did you? Frederick. Oh, Frederick. Okay. Visited Minnesota. <laughs> he sent this funny card. And uh, Maggie. I think it's the same Maggie that you got from Japan. Sent this other Japanese card. Oh, yeah. She did say she sent two. Zoe. She lives in Antarctica, but she visited Rapa Wait, Nui. Antarctica? What? <laughs> from one isolated place to another. Whoa. Or maybe she just visited Antarctica. Well, she visited Rapa Nui. And the next card is from Tarek. He is from Germany, and he visited Edinburgh. This is, uh, oh, it's actually sent from Croatia. This is actually for you, Keith. Oh, yes! Gasper from Slovenia. Thank you so much for this postcard. I want to go to Croatia. This is from Skona, the south tip of Sweden. They have their own kind of Skona flag. That's pretty cool. Bara and Luke and Gulshot. This is from the DMZ, the border between North and South Korea. We have three postcards from Chris for me. One for Hannah. Thank you. It's for me from the Netherlands. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Hello all. Greetings from the beautiful country of San Marino, Ooh. where I'm visiting from Scotland. I love your videos. Best wishes, Martin. Hi guys. I'm Matt living in the UK and I'm originally from Australia. Australia. Aussieland. All those accents were very offensive. Uh, <laughs> Finally, we got this sent from Dean and Brennan, who visited Costa Rica. Costa Rica. Costa Rica, the place where you will not die with ziplining. Uh, with that being done, now we have letters. <laughs> Hey Bars, my name is Neil. Uh, I'm from Melbourne, Australia. I would like to invite you and your friends to an Indian function called World Goa Day. This is from Robert. He sent us a bunch of stuff from Ontario. And oh, he sent us this comic book because he went to Comic Con in Canada and thinks it's a good idea for us to draw a comic book of Geography Now. So one of you guys should do that. Can any of you draw a comic style for us on Geography Now? I don't know, make us superheroes. Make yes. me an anime character. What kind of superpower would you have if you were a superhero? Superpower, uh, superhero. Ooh, I want to fly. Oh, super strength because I'm small. Mm -hmm. And then I'd just like, you'd have no idea, and I'd, I'd be opening cans of <laughs> jelly. If I could be any Marvel character, I would probably want to be Thor, I guess. Hmm. Like the new Endgame Thor, like the fat Thor. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, this dude Jonathan sent us some coins from. Germany. So this is pre-EU. He also sent this picture of Paul oh, or Barb's. Okay, great. This is from Nigeria. Ooh. It is from Patrick and he sent each one of us here at Geography Now a different postcard from Nigeria. Alright, so we got this here guy from Canada. His name is Brendan. He sent us this here five cent Canadian tire uh, thing here, eh? Oh, just what I always wanted, eh? And, you know, maybe next time you could send some hockey sticks, eh? And, you know, we could go play some hockey out in the Old. This gives you 10% off if you get your tires done at Canadian Tire. Okay, this is really cool. This is sent from Ruth, who wrote this book about North Korea, and she said she put, she mentions Geography Now in the book twice. Cool. She, on page 46, she says, Korean spoken in North is purer than the South, says Paul Barbie in the North Korea video in his YouTube series, Geography Now. You remember from the episode. Congratulations, that's Congratulations. huge. Yes, check this book out. North Korea in 100 Facts by Ruth Ann Monty. This letter is from Allison from Nevada. She loves Panama and she's so excited, she says, for the Panama episode. She even drew a map. It's wow. actually really well drawn. And Dang. a flag wrote some facts about Panama actually on here for us. So maybe we'll put some of that in the episode. We probably will. All right, so Patrick sends us this amazing community safety guide. So Patrick works in security consulting. If you are in a category five hurricane, a 5.0, oh wait, no. What's the 
the biggest one on a Richter scale for earthquakes? Doesn't it's matter. A, it's like nine, I don't know. You're dead. You will probably need this book. Thank you, thank you, Patrick. You know what's weird? I'm not an actor, but I've always wanted to do uh, industrials. Have you ever done an industrial, Hannah? No. It's like the employee training videos. Oh, yeah. The really crappy ones, like when you get hired at Walmart. It's really cheesy. We're here to give you the tools you'll need to ensure quality customer service. <laughs> wow, that was really good. You'd be great at it. I've always wanted to do an industrial. Uh, I got two letters. One, they're both kind of like written in French. Uh, one is from Jacob. Uh, J'ai écrit cela en français. Pourquoi pas? En fait, je parle assez couramment espagnol parce que mon père voyageait assez souvent au Mexique. So your dad went to Mexico. Why are you writing in French though? I don't get it. But anyway, uh, he sends these Mexican coins. And um, the other one, bonjour. Oh, your name is also Paul. This is really cool. You come from the Brittany region of France. Looks like the American flag. And uh, he also sent this 20 franc banknote. That's pretty cool. This, this is the money they used before they joined the Euro. And uh, K Keith, um, would you like to do the honors? Oh, sure, I'll open up the box. I love opening up boxes. Oh, basically alcohol. <gasps> is this the guy who's giving us alcohol? Oh, his name is Jordan. So, yeah. Yes. Okay, hey, thank Canada. you, Jordan from Canada. Dear Barb's and the rest of the GN crew, my name is Jordan. I haven't been a, I've been a fan of your channel for a long time now. I've included some Canadian specialties in your package. The maple syrup is from Roots, a well-known Canadian clothing retailer. Crown Royal Whiskey is perhaps the most well-known and wildly sold Canadian whiskey. I like it mixed with ginger ale. Mm. Lastly, I've included two small bottles of Inniskillen. Inniskillen? Inniskillen ice wine. Ice wine is created by using grapes that have frozen on the vines, so Canada is an ideal place to make ice wine. Ice wine. Innis, thanks for making a show that is interesting, educational, and funny. Keep up the good work. Well, Hannah, you're more of the wine person. Would you I like, am. Would I'm you gonna like, take that. You want some ice wine? Yes, I want the ice wine. How about you take this for you and Ian? Yes. So uh, I think you guys would love this. By the way, uh, Geography Now does not endorse underage drinking. If you are underage, do not drink. We are of age though, so we can drink. So, haha. -ha. All right. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen. So, I believe that is it. But before we go, uh, you know how we always end this with Return Address Contest! Woo! I put your return addresses in this bag right here. Whoever we pick gets to win a Geography Now notepad and button. Woo! All right, Hannah, you first. Go for it. And Keith, you pick one out too. And by the way, if anybody wants to take send some more Struple waffles from the Netherlands. Ken from Tokyo is the number one winner. Woo! Tokyo. Lincoln. From oh, I love that name. Utah. Utah. <laughs> okay. Cool. All right, guys. Well, that's just about it. Uh, yeah. You guys, any last words for the fans out there? Roll tie. Oh. Uh, go Gators. <laughs> <laughs> Alabama has more national championships than anybody in college history football. I mean, Gators. it's college football. So, I mean, either way, yeah. everybody's a loser. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how to relate to that. All right, guys. Thank you for, uh, thank you. Uh, you've just been flagged. Stay cool. Stay tuned.